Hi and welcome to this new video. Uh, today we're going to talk about a new Framework 7 component which is called Timeline. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because, um, I know, I didn't really use this component very much lately. Um, actually, I've never used it before. And um, it's not one of the, you know, the usual components that you would use every day. Uh, so let me just show you how it looks like. Uh, so this is the vertical timeline component. It basically shows you a list of events ordered by time. And there are also some other options that you can set to make, give it a different appearance like this, for example, or like this. And you can also create an horizontal timeline, which is pretty cool. So, I wanted to share something with you today, uh, which is this app. I'm currently working on this uh, little app for a future book that uh, we might cr create soon. And um, this application basically fetches the Track TV API. If you don't know what Track is, just uh, go to the website. Um, it's basically just an, um, an aggregator for uh, movies and TV shows and stuff like that. And they have a lot of information of all kinds of shows that are running on TV and on, on in the cinemas. And yeah, I'm fetching this um, to display the currently trending movies. So as you can see, uh, these are some of the currently running movies with some detailed information and a trailer. And what I wanted is below this section, I wanted the timeline component because I wanted the um, um, new upcoming movies, which are not released yet, to be displayed in a, in a sequential order. Um, I think for this, the timeline component would be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you how I do this with, with uh, Vue.js and Framework 7. And yeah, let's dive into it. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is um, look into the documentation and uh, check for the component that I would like to use. So what I'm going to go for is um, this, this side by side um, uh, view here. And uh, of course, we're going to use the view version. So I'm going to switch to the view uh, documentation over here. And here we can see the side by side code for view, which is not very much. So uh, we're going to use that. And let's quickly just hop into the code here. Um, much of the application has already been done, but this is not very important for you. Um, since we're only going to talk about the timeline component today. Um, whoops. So let's quickly just look into the data that we're going to use with, uh, going to go with. Um, as you can see in this line, um, we are already doing the API call to track TV to get the most anticipated videos. And I'm logging them here. So let's go back into the browser and check for the now there are lots of errors still here um mostly it has to do with uh, course issues so you have to ignore that <laughs> sorry about that but here's the the data that, that we're logging and what we're getting is an array of 10 items so it's going to be 10 movies and each movie has um uh, has some details on it with all the information about the movie itself. So like um, there's a rating and a release date and the title of the movie and all this stuff. And we're going to use this information to display it into a timeline component at the bottom of, um, of our app here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, right at the, at the part where I'm gonna where I want my timeline to appear, I'm first going to add a title. Um, and I'm going to call it like, uh, I don't know, most anticipated, or just, just coming up. I think that's better. And then I'm going to add a new block. 
And in here, I'm going to add a new component. And I'm going to call this component anticipated. Because this will um, hold all the upcoming anticipated movies. Um, of course, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call this like this. And then I'm going to create this component. So I create a new file, tcpated.view. And of course, it will have a template. Oops, sorry. We will have some styles. I really liked my my styles to be to be scoped, which means um, there won't be any any collisions between uh, style uh, between styles globally. And we're gonna have the um, the initialization script. I'm just gonna copy it from here because I'm just lazy to type it all. So what this does is it will um, initialize a new view component and export it. Um, we will have some data which we have to populate and uh, we are going to use some props um, which will inherit all the movies um, that we want to display in our timeline component. So this is it for the mo oh no, we can already add our timeline component here. So. I'm just going to copy this example code from the documentation and just paste it in here and save it. Um, and what we're going to also have to do here is import the, um, the component we created. So it's going to be import anticipated from uh, components slash anticipated dot view. Same for here. Okay, let's see if this works. Mm. So we are getting our header title, but not the content. Not sure why. Oh, we get an error. You failed to mark component template or render function not defined. Uh, why that? Oh, <laughs> have a little template, little spelling mistake here. Okay, there we go. So this is the first part of our timeline component. So if we add more elements to it, we will get this nice uh, vertical view here, something like this. And yeah, let's do that. Um, so we have to pass in the movie data from here into this component as a prop. Um, and as you can see, I've already um, attached the, the anticipated data to the home component. And we're just going to pass this data to um, um, to our component. So something like this. So this basically means um, <clears throat> we're using the data from the anticipated variable. Again, this is this data from our um, API call. And we're passing it into our new component through a prop, which is called movies. So now we should be able to use this prop movies. Okay. And in order to do that, we're going to use a good old for loop, uh, movie and movies. And to see if this works, we're going to try to add a title here. So movie.detail, was it detail or details? Uh, detail. And then title. Okay. So uh, let's see if this works. 
Oh yeah, there we go. So we already have our uh, titles here, as you can see, of all the movies. And this already looks pretty nice. Mm, what's not correct is the dates here. It's, it's all set for the for December 21st. And that's because it's set here uh, statically. Um, now this is a little bit tricky and um, we're gonna have to use uh, some filters here to convert the data from the uh, movie data into um, these strings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the data movie.detail.title and I'm gonna set a filter. <coughs> Sorry, um, and I'm gonna uh, name it, I don't know, day filter. And I'm gonna do the same thing here for the month. And I'm gonna define the filters. Um, we have day filter. and month filter and we're getting the date okay um and what these filters do that we will get the date as a string and um, i think it's an american format let me look that up Oh, it's called released. Okay, so uh, this is the date string that we're going to work with. And as you can see, we cannot pass this directly into our component view here. So um, we have to change this to uh, release. Mm. And the first one you want to try is the filter works, so this is the day filter and the month filter. Okay, so we now see day filter and month filter here in the timeline component. And now we have to convert the date. Now, uh, what we can do is we can create a new variable, new date object from the date string that we're getting. Um, and I think we can just call d dot, uh, oh no, it's d dot date. I think it's a date method. No, why not? d dot date is not a function. Uh, so maybe it was d, I don't remember. Still not. Uh, let's just look up the reference. It's new date and we're passing in the, uh, should be okay. So we're getting the, oh, get date. Okay. So it's called get date. Okay, so now we're getting the right day for each movie and we have to add in the month. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult because we want the, um, the, the actual name of each month. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a little bit messy. Um, so what we have to do is something like this. Uh, so we have February, yeah, I, I don't know if there's a better or like a less verbose uh, way to do this, but um, I only know of this solution. So what, what we're doing here is um, we're getting the same thing as here, we're getting the um, the month value get month 
get month. Uh, and then we will return month, so the array, um, and then the name of the of the month. So I think that should work. And yeah, there we go. So as you can see, we are now have uh, November third for Thor Ragnarok, and November seventeenth for Justice League and all the other movies. So this seems to work. Okay, I think that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video and was helpful to you. If it was helpful to you, please don't forget to like this video. And if you want to see more uh, upcoming new videos in the future, uh, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified for new um, new episode. And yeah, have a great day. Bye.